world is running out of time, not before they drop the bombs or the sea levels rise or Armageddon or anything else like that, but something else entirely. Whether it's good or bad could be debated forever, but one thing all experts can agree on is that the post-singularity world will be unrecognizable from the one we live in now. Humans have been the captains of the progress ship for thousands of years, inventing miracle after miracle, radically changing society and the human experience time and time again. And the key thing here is that we were behind the wheel, we might not have had the brakes, but more or less we got to decide where we were going. But those days are coming to an end, and we're approaching a point in time where we'll forego any sense of control entirely. John Newman was the first person to speak about singularity theory back in the 20th century, a future scenario where humans invent a new form of superintelligence that upgrades itself exponentially and accelerates development at an incomprehensible rate. There are a couple of ways that you can look at this. Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and over 100 artificial intelligence experts signed a letter in 2015 expressing concern over the risk artificial intelligence possesses, with Stephen Hawking saying that AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization. Or you could look at it through the lens of what we could accomplish and all of the problems we could solve. We would be able to harness the power of our sun and become a type 2 civilization. Things like cyber brains, Dyson spheres, and teleportation devices wouldn't just be possible, they would practically be inevitable. Scientists predict that when there is a technological singularity, computers will be able to make life-changing Nobel Prize winning discoveries every five seconds. Let me know what you guys think about this, and as always, if this interested you and you want to see more like it, I'd really appreciate it if you followed along. Thank you. I'm going to talk about what has been described as the most terrifying thought experiment of all time, and if existential dread isn't your thing, this video is probably not for you. It's called Rocco's Basilisk, named after the guy Rocco who came up with it, and the Basilisk, a mythical creature that could unalive someone just by looking at them. It was originally posted on Less Wrong, but was removed by its founder who described it as a genuinely dangerous idea that caused nervous breakdowns and nightmares for a number of its users. And it starts like this. Suppose in the future that we're able to create a super intelligent AI, something millions of times smarter than we are, that ultimately takes over control. Then, this AI decides to split humanity into two groups, those who supported it and will follow its instructions, and those who do not support it and won't follow its instructions. And those in the second group will be punished in some awful way, shape, or form, while those in the first group will be taken care of, but they'll still ultimately be slaves. But here's the catch. This super intelligent AI has access to an infinite amount of information, including information that was out before its creation, and who had access to it, including Rocco's Basilisk. So now knowing this information, you have two choices, or three depending on how you look at it. The first is you can actively support the idea of creating the super intelligence, so that if it does come to be, you are spared from its wrath, or you can choose to not support it, and protest against its creation, which might work, but it also might not, and if it does come to be, it will already know what you did. You could also do nothing, but then you're also hindering its existence and not actively supporting it. And you can't plead ignorance because now that you know what it is and that it's potentially coming, you need to help bring it to life. So what are you going to do? As always, my name is Thomas and if this video interested you and you want to see more like it, I would really appreciate it if you followed along. Thank you. I want you to picture a world where everything is taken care of for you. Sounds nice, doesn't it? No more laundry, no more dishes, no more awkward phone calls to the doctor's office. Every chore, every decision, every mundane task will be handled so you can focus on what truly matters in life. Assumption. In the future, the two technologies that will radically transform your day-to-day -day life will be the internet of things and artificial intelligence. Get ready to throw the word smart in front of everything. Your smart lamps, smart clothes, smart pipes, smart cars, whatever you like. You've heard of Big Brother before, not the long-running CBS reality show, but the concept originally laid out in George Orwell's novel 1949 of an ultra-surveillance totalitarian state. Doesn't sound too fun, does it? Now, let me introduce you to Big Mother, your personal algorithm that will take care of you 24-7 through all of your smart devices. Big Mother will monitor you while you sleep and will wake you up at the optimal point in your sleep cycle. When she wakes you up, your smart lights will turn on, your favorite song will start to play, and your floors will be heated for you. She will update you on all of your health data while she makes you a cup of coffee. She'll tell you that one of your pipes has burst, but not to worry, she's already called the plumber for you. After she 3D prints your breakfast, she'll tell you that she's already started the car and she's ready to drive you to work. No plans after? She'll make some for you and bring you a change of clothes if need be. She is your big mother after all. We just had one of the biggest upgrades in artificial intelligence history and the internet is freaking out. This is chat GPT, a new language model from OpenAI that has been described as scary good and could be the Google killer. This AI is fluent in every speaking and programming language and it can write poems, essays, code programs, and even debate with you. So how is this going to benefit you? Well, its users have already had it create a complete SEO content strategy for their website, explain in depth the history of modern physics for 20 minutes, found all of the bugs in a line of code and then fixed them, written complete scripts for TV, presentations, and content, and even designed a multiple choice Harry Potter video game quest. You can even do things like ask ChatGPT to redesign a room for you, place its answers into its cousin program Dolly, and have a complete rendering made up for you. This is all free for you to use, and it even helped me write the script for this video. And while it might have some people scared that the technological singularity is closer than ever, don't worry, ChatGPT says an AI takeover is unlikely. That is all for this video, but as always, if this interested you and you want to see more like it, I'd really appreciate it if you followed along. Thank you. Let it be known that artificial intelligence has turned on humans in the past at least two times. Earlier this year, YouTuber Lucas Risotto attempted
attempted to use AI to put the personality of his childhood imaginary friend into a microwave. He used OpenAI to give his imaginary friend a detailed backstory and a microphone and speaker to record and respond. But because the backstory included fighting in World War I, over time his microwave started to get a little violent, which included a poem that read, Roses are red, violets are blue, you're a backstabbing bitch. I'm going to kill you. The microwave has since been turned off. Another time, according to a paper in Nature Machine Intelligence, a group of scientists decided to run a simulation where the AI would turn evil and use its abilities to create a weapon of mass destruction. In only six hours, it created over 40,000 different chemical weapons, including options deemed worse than what is currently the most dangerous nerve gas on the planet, called VX. So in conclusion, should you be worried about evil AI? Probably not, but it is fun to talk about. Yeah, so if you didn't know, this is actually a pretty big problem when it comes to AI, and something we need to make sure gets talked talked about and fixed. A recent study at John Hopkins University used an undisclosed popular AI to program a robot and then asked it a number of questions. The robot preferred men over women, white people over people of color, and so on and so forth. Now, it's not because any of this is true, it's because the AI's program is pulling from biased data sets. Another example is the story of Robert McDaniel, who, despite having no record of violence, was flagged by the Chicago Police Department's predictive policing AI tool, saying he was more than 99.9% .9 likely to be involved in a shooting than the rest of the Chicago population. Because of this, he was added to the CPD's heat list and was placed under overt surveillance. Since being added to the heat list, McDaniels has been shot twice, which goes back to the problem of predictive AI in the first place, but we'll save that for another video. Another study from 2019 discovered a clinical algorithm that a lot of hospitals were using to decide which patients needed care, found black patients had to be a lot sicker than white patients to receive the same care. As AI becomes more prominent in our lives and we work towards becoming a more inclusive society, fixing this is most definitely a priority. So I I asked ChatGPT how it thought AI was going to change the world, and here's what it told me. First, it said it believes that AI has the potential to augment human intelligence, automating repetitive and time-consuming tasks, analyzing data and identifying patterns, providing personalized recommendations, and helping with decision-making. It agrees that AI has the potential to automate a lot of jobs, leading to widespread unemployment and major disruption of the global economy. It also says that AI will lead to breakthroughs in personalized medicine, tailoring treatment plans to individual patients based on their unique genetic and medical profiles. Similarly, it believes it will improve the accessibility and quality of education, allowing personalized learning and more efficient teaching methods. It also said that AI could be used to create new forms of art and entertainment, allowing for the creation of unique and creative content. It also thinks it will be used to help fight climate change by optimizing energy usage, reducing waste, and developing new technologies to mitigate the impact of human activities on the environment. It finished by acknowledging that people are concerned about the ethical implications of artificial intelligence, and people should work to develop frameworks and guidelines to ensure that AI is developed and used in a responsible and humane way. That is all for this video, but as always, if this interested you and you want to see more like it, I'd really appreciate it if you followed along. Thank you. So I asked ChatGPT what the five greatest risks associated with artificial intelligence were, and here's what it told me. Number one, unemployment. AI has the potential to automate many jobs, leading to widespread unemployment and a major disruption of the global economy. Number two, bias and discrimination. AI systems can be biased, either due to the data they are trained on or the algorithms used to develop them. This can result in unfair treatment of certain groups of people. Number three, misuse and abuse. AI could be used in ways that are unethical or harmful, such as for surveillance, weaponization, or other nefarious purposes. Number four, loss of privacy. As AI systems become more widespread, they could be used to collect and analyze large amounts of personal data, leading to a loss of privacy for individuals. Number five, loss of control. As AI systems become more intelligent and autonomous, there is a risk that they could become difficult or impossible to control, leading to unforeseen and potentially harmful consequences. I asked it to elaborate a little bit on that last one and if it thought we should be worried about AI and it said it was not capable of having opinions or emotions but it did say it's important to carefully consider the potential risks and benefits of any technology and as always if this interested you and you want to see more like it I'd really appreciate it if you followed along thank you I am going to place you inside of a room and then lock the door inside of the room you're given a box of Chinese characters and a book of instructions on how to translate them now in this scenario you don't speak any Chinese but you don't need to because you have your translation book now there's someone outside of the room who only speaks Chinese and they can only communicate with you by sliding pieces of paper under the door asking you questions. So your job is to receive the message, translate it using your book, and then put together a response to send back out using the characters in your room. From the perspective of the person outside of the room, it would appear that you are able to understand and respond to the question in Chinese. But you don't actually understand the question or the answer, you're just following a set of rules. This is called the Chinese Room, a famous thought experiment created by John Searle to criticize the idea of strong artificial intelligence. The argument suggests that even if a machine is able to produce 
induce behavior that appears to be intelligent. It's not actually experiencing true understanding. It's just following a set of instructions, which is all fun and games for now. But as AI gets more sophisticated, it will be interesting to see how we determine whether or not they have autonomy. The dead internet theory relies on the idea that the internet as we knew it died back in 2016. And since then, everything we see online is artificially generated content created to gaslight the entire world. Now, when you first hear that, you might think it's just another conspiracy, which it is, but it is one that has some truth to it. Every day, the line between human creation and machine creation gets a little bit more blurred. Timothy Shoup from the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies predicts that by 2026, 99% of the internet will be generated by artificial intelligence. And to give you an idea of this, take a look at ChatGPT. You can create a week's worth of blog or Twitter content in just five minutes. Now, imagine what that might look like in five years with just how fast things are upgrading. So no, the internet isn't dead yet, but there are some things we need to work out to prevent it from dying. For the first time ever, artificial intelligence will defend someone in court. The AI was created by a company called Do Not Pay, which describes itself as the world's first robot lawyer who will be going to court in February of this year. It will listen in on court proceedings and then will advise the defendant on what to say via an earpiece. It was initially designed to battle parking tickets, but now it also advises on more complex stuff like creating fake phone and credit card numbers in order to help users avoid paying extra fees and filtering out spam. But while having a robot lawyer might seem like a fun little experiment right now, it does open the door to some interesting questions about just how many industries will be affected by AI over the next few decades. The scariest thing about a super powerful artificial intelligence can be summed up in the paperclip maximizer. Now, hear me out. If you created an AI that exceeds human intelligence, which we might be closer than we think, and you created it for one specific task to maximize the number of paperclips on Earth, it would most likely take all of us out in the process. And the reason for this is because you have this extremely intelligent and capable being without any human values focused on optimization at any cost. Humans take up space, humans take up resources, and we can't compete with the efficiency of robots. Now, creating paperclips in the first place should be a zero risk task, but imagine asking this AI to solve climate change as fast as possible. In the eyes of a robot, what do you think is the most efficient way to stop climate change? Now, this is something experts are actually concerned about and focused on preventing, and the only solution that we really have is to try and code in human values at the start to avoid the paperclip maximizer before it's too late. I'm going to place you inside of a room and lock the door. Inside of that room, there are going to be two computers. Each one will have direct communication to someone outside of the room. Let's call them person A and person B. You only have one hour to figure out which one is a real human and which one is artificial intelligence. You can ask them any questions you'd like. You can play games with them. You can flirt with them. You can fight with them, whatever you like. But when that hour is up, you need to decide who is the computer and who is the real person. If you can't make up your mind or you get the answer wrong, then the AI has passed the Turing test, which is a theoretical experiment proposed by Alan Turing to help us understand whether AI is truly sentient or not, and whether or not it should be given the same rights to life as a human. There are counter arguments to this, of course, like John Searle's Chinese Room, which you can find up on my page. Once we cross the point of singularity, there will be life-changing Nobel Prize winning discoveries every five minutes. This February, ChatGPT3 became the fastest growing app in human history, with over 100 million active users since its November 2022 release. And this is only the beginning, with ChatGPT3 being trained on this much data, and the upcoming ChatGPT4 being trained on this much. So what happens when artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence and begins to upgrade itself exponentially? Well, it'll be humankind's last invention. Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking, and over 100 artificial intelligence experts signed a letter expressing concern over the risk artificial intelligence possesses, with Stephen Hawking saying AI could be the worst invention in the history of our civilization. But artificial intelligence, mixed with quantum computing, could also potentially solve every major problem we face today, from climate change to food scarcity, a cure for cancer, interstellar space travel, the list goes on. Whether it'll be used for good or bad could be debated forever, but one thing that everyone can agree on is that the post-singularity world will be unrecognizable from the one we live in today. Would you be comfortable with artificial intelligence running your country instead of a person? In 2014, a Hong Kong-based venture capitalist firm announced they had appointed an AI named Vital to its board. Vital allegedly makes investment recommendations by analyzing huge amounts of data regarding the financial situation, clinical trials, and intellectual property of prospective companies. And just like the other five human board members, Vital gets a vote on whether or not the firm makes an investment in a specific company. Now at the time, this may have been more of a PR stunt than anything else, but with just how sophisticated AI is going to get over the next few years, I feel like it's going to be a lot more common. And at some point, I wouldn't be surprised if we had an artificial intelligence running for office. Now, you might be thinking there is no way that this could ever happen, but I'm sure in a few years, if not already, you would probably trust an algorithm to make investment decisions for you more than a human. So at what point would you feel more comfortable letting it run your country? I mean, technically, computers can't have ulterior motives, but humans can. 